guys, it's Johnny. Welcome back to the Wanderlust Bus. We are actually out in the old workshop today where we, if you've been following along since the beginning, which I know you have, we did the skylight project out here because this is all we had at the time. But we have since moved up to bigger and better things. We got the shed out front and this has become our lumber shed. And we've been storing our beetle kill pine in here and that is why we are out here today. We are going to be installing our beautiful Kentucky hardwood beetle kill blue stained wildcat crazy pine eh, whatever it is if you saw the video i screwed it up the whole way through i still haven't gotten it down but we have divided all of this up if you look i'll show you we have done the bluest stuff is right here we have the lighter blue stuff in the back which we're calling ish and the middle section is the what we're calling the cool pile. And that's anything that's got a really, really cool grain or a nifty stain pattern or something that makes it unique from all the other wood we have. And then the, the largest that we have is over on the other side, and that is all blonder wood. Wood that I would say is less than 25% stained with the, uh, the, the pest from uh, the beetles. So, we have some things we have to do in order to prep this wood. And the first thing we have to do is cut it down to size. We have 33 feet in length of actual flat board area from front to back and about eight and a half feet in width. So we are gonna use mainly blonde on the floor and we're gonna use the bluer stuff for the upright so that we can uh, get some really good view of it and it's kind of unobstructed with the, with the exception of the LED lights. But that's another story. For now, let's head into the shed and we will grab some wood and I'll show you how we're gonna prep this to get, well, actually put it on the floor. All right, so you'll see here, I'm just making 90 degree cuts. I'm not doing any of the final joinery, the rabbits or the lap joints that are gonna be on the finished product. I'll do that after we've laid everything out and made the templates for cutting all of our access hatches. Alright, so I know it looks like I'm playing with blocks, but I'm actually inside the bus and we are using this mock-up. I actually took some scrap that was all the same width and uh, we're using it as a mock-up for our scale for the, the, big, the big boards we're using, which you can kind of see behind me. But we figured it's a lot easier to do it this way than to cut up the good boards and end up destroying something. Not to mention it's kind of hard to haul around all the heavy three-quarter inch plank board just to play around so we determined by doing this and by diagramming everything out that we are going with five foot seven foot and nine foot pieces and uh, with some fill-ins here and there but overall that is the three sizes we're going to be using and it gives us a really really randomly patterned pattern randomly you get my meaning so it doesn't look like we planned on it being well not perfect so that's kind of what we're going for. And now that we've got it all laid out, I've got the pieces cut in five, seven, and nine foot lengths outside. And we got to bring those in and start laying out so that we can get it marked out for where our template's going to be for the, uh, the hatches. So we need to make sure that we do all that. So let me go grab the stuff and I'm going to go ahead and get started on, well, marking out the hatch openings. I don't want to play with blocks anymore. All right, so before we actually start attaching the flooring to the bus, we need to create a slip layer so that it doesn't squeak and so that it uh, allows for expansion without bowing the wood as much. Um, we're using just standard red rosin paper and uh, it's a very easy install. We're just stapling it down, six inches overlap. It's that simple and uh, it's 
buy it at your local home center, ask for red rosin paper, and uh, you can see I've already started where I actually needed to play, put the wood down. So it's ready to go. I need to finish it out, and uh, then we'll start laying this wood down. Alright, so we've got all the rosin paper down and we've cut the holes for all of our access panels. Now it's time to start laying down the wood. In order to do so, we need to finagle some things and make sure it's going to be easily accessible for these panels but not look unnatural. So we're going to start by laying down some panels and cutting some custom cut sizes and you'll see that all in the time lapse that you're going to see, well, right now. So, day two of the flooring project, and that is because it has taken a little longer than we expected. Mainly because we wanted the patterning to be as good as it could be, and what we've done is made sure that all the staining pattern from the pine beetle, as well as the green pattern from the wood, as match up in the group areas as much as we can. And I'm also using less desirable pieces under stuff like appliances and cabinetry, so that way I eliminate a lot of the waste. We're also doing something different instead of nailing it down like a lot of people do with hardwood flooring. We are using these trim head screws because I want to make sure that any motion from the drive, from wherever we go, doesn't cause nails to come loose with typical flooring nails. It shouldn't, but I'm just being extra careful. We also have to make sure we cut both ends of these boards. No matter how long you cut them, make sure that you're cutting both sides of them because if you get cabin grade lumber, it might not be a true 90 degree cut on the ends of it. So make sure you do that so that you don't end up with huge gaps in your flooring. So I got a lot more flooring to lay and you guys will see that in the time lapse, but I wanted to tell you day two and some of the struggles we've run into so far. So keep watching and we'll see you at the end of this. The final piece is attached. Now we just have to go back and do some routing around the vents as well as the front here to trim it off. And uh, we'll come back in a second and show you how to do it. All right, so now I'm at the front. All the flooring is done, but like I said, we have to allow for some, some access points as well as cutting the pattern out for this thing for the uh, stairs. So to do that, I'm gonna use a router bit with a three quarter inch bit and a guide on it. And just like that, we've made a fine mess of everything that I now have to clean up, but little sanding and uh, we should have some rather nice entry points. So next on to uh, 
I don't know what else. But join us next time. I don't know what we've got coming next, but there's a lot more coming out. It's probably going to be plumbing and electrical, but stay tuned. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, stop by the website, thewanderlustbus.com. Check out our Facebook or Instagram. Join our new uh, Organic Wanderers Facebook group. You can find it on the Facebook. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Johnny with the Wanderlust Bus. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.